this is a course about the analysis and design of algorithms. In the first part of this course, we are going to learn how to analyze an algorithm. And then once we know how to analyze an algorithm, we are then going to look at different ways to design algorithms. The reason we want to do analysis of algorithms first is that we want to uh, come up with some, we want to learn some mathematical tools and notations that we will be using to analyze every algorithm that we design. So what do we mean uh, by analysis of algorithms? Okay, so what does analyzing an algorithm mean? Well, what we do when we analyze an algorithm is we try to predict the resources that the algorithm is going to use. So analyzing an algorithm means predicting the resources that an algorithm requires. Now what sort of resources are we talking about over here? Well, in this course, the most important resource that we're going to look at is time. Okay, the time it takes for a machine to run the algorithm. So computational time is going to be the most important resource that we're going to look at. Most of the time we're going to exclusively focus on computational time. There are some other resources which also turn out to be important, uh, such as memory, the amount of space that an algorithm needs to run. And then there are other resources like communication, bandwidth, and so on, uh, which we're not going to worry about in this course. We're going to primarily look at computational time. And for a few exceptional cases, we'll look at memory. But unless I explicitly mention we're going to restrict ourselves, unless I explicitly mention that we're talking about, uh, that we're worried about memory, we're going to assume that computational time is what is going to be uh, important for us. Now, uh, the reason why uh, we need to predict the amount of time that an algorithm is going to require is that when we have multiple possible algorithms to solve the same problem, we want to analyze those multiple solutions. Uh, we want to analyze those multiple algorithms and we want, we, we want to pick that algorithm whose efficiency in terms of time is the best. Okay, so when there are multiple alternative algorithms to solve the same problem. For example, there are numerous sorting algorithms which all solve the sorting problem. We're going to look at many of those uh, algorithms in this course. But uh, given a problem, you can have a whole range of different algorithms that can solve the problem. And in such circumstances, we will be analyzing them, determining how much computational time they need. And we're going to pick the one which is most efficient. And that is the algorithm which we are going to implement as a program to solve our problem. 
uh, in, in, in many cases, it's possible that we could come up with algorithms whose performance or efficiency in terms of time is extremely poor. And in such cases, our analysis should, should, should flag a warning that there's no point in going ahead and implementing this algorithm because if you implement this on a machine, for large inputs, the algorithm may take forever to terminate. So that's, that's the advantage of uh, analyzing an algorithm. We can come up with a notation, we, we, we're going to come up with a mathematical notation to predict the amount of time that an algorithm requires. And uh, that's going to allow us to evaluate when a given algorithm may be infeasible to implement because it may just be taking too much time. And when there are multiple alternative algorithms, uh, it can help us in uh, deciding which of those multiple alternatives we really want to go for and which of the alternatives we want to discard. Now, you can immediately see a potential problem here, a potential difficulty in analyzing an algorithm. And the difficulty is that it is very hard to predict exactly how much computational time a given algorithm is going to require. So the exact number of resources are obviously going to depend on a number of factors. It's going to depend on um, the exact program, right? Because if you are an expert programmer, you may write highly optimized code which is going to run very fast. But if you if you code up the algorithm in a relatively poor way, an unoptimized way, it may take a longer time. So it's going to depend on the exact program. It's going to depend on the exact uh, programming language. Right? There are certain languages whose uh, 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 programs in certain languages may run faster than programs in other languages. Okay, it's going to depend on the exact hardware you use. If you have a faster machine, uh, then it's going to execute the same code faster than a slower machine. And it's also going to depend on what other jobs are running on uh, the machine on which you're running the algorithm. So other jobs running on the machine. Because if there are too many other jobs taking up processor time, then it may take a longer amount of time to uh, execute your code. So you can think of other factors which are um, uh, uh, which will play a role in determining the exact computational time that it takes, uh, that, that, that your uh, algorithm is going to take. So how do we then successfully analyze an algorithm given that it's, it appears to be so difficult to predict how much, uh, what's the exact amount of time it's going to take to run? Well, the solution to this is that if you're going to define a generic machine, this generic machine is going to capture the important features of uh, all of the real machines, the real computers that we have. So this generic machine has features that are common to all the various uh, 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 machines that we have in reality and we are going to imagine running the algorithm on this generic machine and we're going to worry about how much time it takes for the algorithm to run on this generic machine and this generic machine is called a random access machine. Or RAM. Note that this RAM doesn't mean random access memory, it means random access machine. Uh, 
this let's look at some of the features of this generic machine so one of the features of this generic machine is going to be that it's a single processor machine it's not a multi core machine so there's going to be a single processor executing the program furthermore the execution of any algorithm is going to be sequential we're going to assume that there is no concurrency so sequential execution of program instructions that's another feature of this machine and really to uh, to be able to define this machine completely we need to specify what are the instructions that are executed by the processor right so we need to define what the instruction set is and we need to define the cost in terms of time for executing each of the instructions in this instruction set right for example your instruction set may have um it may have arithmetic operations if you've done a course on computer architecture you would uh, recall this very well uh, so so a processor can have um uh, hardware to execute arithmetic operations like add subtract multiply divide uh taking the remainder when one number is divided by another taking the floor of a number taking the ceiling of a number and so on so these are the arithmetic instructions uh then you'll have load and store instructions where you uh, you basically have a random access memory so along with this processor you have uh you can say a random access memory so given a given a memory address it's going to take you a fixed amount of time to access the contents of that memory address whatever the address be okay, so it so there's a fixed amount of time needed to access memory and to load the contents of the memory into the processor into the register of the processor and to store back the contents of the register into the memory then there are other instructions that are part of the instruction set you can have you know conditional or unconditional branch instructions you can have jump instructions jumping to a particular um, memory address or uh, uh, making a procedure call or returning from a procedure call so you can have a a, a variety of instructions as part of your instruction set and ideally whenever we define a generic machine we need to specify what these instructions exactly are and what their costs are but in this case we're going to avoid doing that because it it's going to turn out that it doesn't really matter what these costs are as long as they are constants as long as they are some constants so you can just think of each instruction in this set taking up a constant amount of time to execute and we're going to see later how uh, you know why it doesn't matter what exactly the values of these constants are but for now you can um, you can assume that you're going to have these standard instructions which you're going to find in most of the real machines and the cost in terms of time the amount of time it takes to execute each of those instructions is going to be constant the instructions are going to be sequentially executed uh, so there's no concurrency in uh, 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 in your program which implements the algorithm and we have a single processor and we have random access memory again we have uh, we're not going to worry about caches okay, we're not going to worry about caches virtual memory and so on just to, we're just going to keep it simple um, and it turns out that uh, uh, the analysis that we do on the simple model is going to be uh, more or less valid when we extend them to more complicated models so having said that let's take a simple algorithm and demonstrate how we analyze the algorithm 
Okay, let's analyze the algorithm. Let's imagine, let's take up a problem, let's design an algorithm, for, a simple algorithm for it, and let's imagine running the algorithm on this generic machine that we've defined and see how analysis of algorithms is done. So we're going we're gonna to do that in the next video.